You might remember that not that many weeks ago, I was able to be a guest on the Politicon podcast, uh, How the Heck Are We Gonna Get Along? And I'm very excited to welcome now onto my show, the host of that podcast, for the first time on The Damage Report, Clay Aiken. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good to be here. Very glad to have you here. Uh, and so the sort of the premise for your podcast is bringing together people who obviously traditionally disagree on a lot of stuff. And we're in a time where these sorts of disagreements seem more timely than ever. What do you think about hosting this podcast in a very different political context than we've ever experienced? Well, you know, it's been an interesting experiment. <laughs> the the podcast is an experiment in, in itself. How the heck are we going to get along? The goal to try to figure out how people from uh, across the political map really can actually sit down and have a conversation without arguing. And I will say, John, the first episode, you were actually on the very first episode, mm -hmm. and it was maybe one of the only ones where people tried their best to do so. <laughs> so um, Is it it's really? been an interesting thing uh, to to watch. You know, I am, I am not ash ashamed of my personal bias. I am willing to admit that I am a uh, Democrat and I am more, more to the left than I am to the, to the right or center even, but I do my best to try to call people out on, on bull, regardless of what side of the aisle they're on. And there's been a whole bunch of it. Yeah. We had a, um, we had one episode when you were on, I think the first one where people did their best to try to get along, um, <laughs> and, and had some reasonable disagreements, but conversations. And then interestingly, the very first episode we had after the quarantine, you want to call it that started that first episode, Adam Carolla was on, um, and, and three other guests and all of them did their best to try to take, take the gravity of the situation and make, and have mm. a somber moment. Representative Ted Lou was on that particular episode yes. and folks on either side were both very respectful of each other. And I thought to myself, okay, you know what? Maybe the answer to how the heck are we going to get along is a, international pandemic and a <laughs> crisis and the next week proved me wrong nope yeah. we can find a way to have partisanship and disagreement even in the middle of a crisis yeah. so <laughs> that went out the window pretty fast well it, it might be possible that we can get along during a pandemic but the, the the pundits might not necessarily like most people out in the country seem to be very supportive of essential workers and nurses they're complying with lockdown orders and things like that um, but sometimes I feel like hosts like me and pundits are some of the worst behaved people. Um, well, you know, interestingly, like I mean, I don't disagree with you. Interestingly, one of the things we talked about on the episode you were on was the media and I think the um, desire or really need uh, on especially the, the larger media networks parts to use hyperbole and to... Mm -hmm make things exciting. I mean, it's, it's, it's the news, it's 24 hours and it's supposed to be the news, but it's also TV and you can't stay on the air unless you've got ratings. If you're a network as big as one of the news networks. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a more of a tendency for those pundits who are traditionally on those TV networks to, um, use hyperbole and to really kind of over inflate things. We've tried with, um, how the heck are we going to get along to, pull from both the punditry side and from the entertainment side, mm -hmm. um, people who aren't typically on there. Uh, Phil Rosenthal, who created and won Emmys for how the, um, for Everybody Loves Raymond, uh, was a guest this week. Robert Dobby, the singer mm -hmm. um, and actor, was on this week. And, you know, it runs the gamut. People are still, you know, people, if they're in the entertainment industry, they know they've got to be exciting if they want to be asked back. Mm -hmm. And so there's some argument. Um, it, we are we're in a place where I think both sides are looking for things to be upset about. And there's plenty there to be upset about. Um, but I don't think we need to look as hard as some people try to look yeah. for it. You know, I, I don't think you have to to be indignant about certain things with this particular president because. There's plenty there without mm. having to look too hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And we should, of course, bear in mind that um, so your, your podcast has sort of a, it's, it's asking a question, both in the title, but also, is this actually a thing that can happen? And then all of a sudden the pandemic happens. I mean, I, as you said, I was in the first episode and even then I, we were a bit worried about having an audience. Was an audience going to show up when the coronavirus was starting to right. spread? But also it's an election year and a presidential election year. This seems like the toughest possible case for the idea that we could potentially get along. So if you do survive this, it should be smooth sailing for any number of seasons right. in the future. 
One um, would hope, but you know, you're right. But I mean, I think that the culture nowadays, and this is just, again, I'm, I'm there on the show to moderate, right? I'm, I'm there to engage the people who are the guests on the panel in a discussion, but I'm not immune to having an opinion myself. So occasionally I'll share it too. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, my opinion right now is that the hyper partisanship that has that we've seen, we thought it was bad between 2008 and 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought it was bad when Mitch McConnell said that his whole goal was to make Obama for a one-term president. Yeah. And I didn't think it could get any worse, but um, hmm. well, we've been proven wrong there. And, and my fear is that if we don't recognize the fact that, yeah, we thought it couldn't get any worse, it has gotten worse. If we actually allow ourselves to believe that it can't get any worse than it is right now, then we really could be in for a world of hurt if it mm -hmm. does. And I think the my personal goal is to try to identify there are places where even people who I agree with politically or on policy are looking for reasons to argue and looking for reason to be upset. And I feel like if we don't take the opportunity to strip that away mm -hmm. and to try to at least disagree on the policy issues uh, and some of the particular gamesmanship, but not some of the trivial. And, and you know what? I think the problem is this particular president doesn't make it easy to ignore certain things, right? Mm -hmm. Does not make it easy to he ignore. He's on Twitter a think, lot. Well, he's on Twitter a lot. And then if he's on a, if he's in a press conference, he makes it very easy to find things to be angry with him about, to be upset mm -hmm. with him about. But my personal philosophy has been, yes, not the brightest person, not the brightest president we've ever had. Do I really think that we need to spend hours being upset about him inject mm -hmm. saying we should inject bleach into our systems no because yes it was stupid but i feel like at some point you have to roll your eyes and pick your battles maybe that's from being a, a teacher for years maybe that's from being a parent for years there are lots of battles <laughs> that are able to be picked and i don't need to pick them all let's focus on like the real real substantive ones so I, I'm not, I haven't got, I haven't gotten unsure of a read off of what you said so far. Do you believe that, that some of this hyperpartisanship is, uh, would be alleviated if we, let's say we get past November and Trump loses and Biden, or, you know, if it's not Biden, somebody uh, replaces him. Do you think that that will make it better? Or do you think, I mean, there's still going to be people that love Trump and now they're going to feel like they've been robbed. Like, do you, I mean, do you have hope that things could get better if it wasn't Trump in the office right now? Well, you know, I think that one of the issues that we have is that this particular president has been allowed by his own party to get away with some things that we really probably wouldn't let other presidents get away with. And I I don't think we'd let presidents of our own party get away with if mm -hmm. they did some or said some of the things this president has. But I think in, in the defense, and I should put that in air quotes, but I can't move my hands right now, um, <laughs> in the defense of um, the Republican Party, in Congress, they have a fear that if they don't side with Trump, they will be eliminated within their own primaries, right? Yes. I don't think that's a valid fear. I think you should stand up and stand up on principle, but they have that belief that, okay, this is how this president is going to respond, and this is how politics is now. And I do hope personally that if Joe Biden determines that he's going to run his campaign based on a return to some sort of civility. Mm -hmm. If he's if he chooses to run his campaign, which so far I think he has with with that being sort of the main banner, we're going to return to civility. We're going to try to return to less partisanship and he's successful in winning. Then, yeah, I hope that politicians on either side of the party won't leave and say, OK, well, this is the only way we can do it. If Trump wins, I do fear. I think if Trump wins, it gets worse because everyone says civility doesn't win. Uh, mm, civility maybe. doesn't win and hyper partisanship does. If Biden's able to stay civil and stay less partisan, then hopefully even those folks who have defended Donald Trump over the past, th those politicians who've defended Donald Trump over the past three years will say, OK, that doesn't always work. Civility, you know, light beat the dark this time. You know what I mean? And I think it really that's why November is really incredibly important, uh, at least for me, whether it be I mean, I policy. I'm a Democrat. But even if I weren't, I'd want that sort of I'd want civility to win. I'd want light to beat dark this time mm -hmm. around. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, that that's a great point, because I know that 
over the past few years, Donald Trump has shown that he can get away with almost anything. And the, the question is going to be, is it him that can get away with anything, or is it a sh person who is shameless enough that can get rid of everything? And um, there's probably a lot of up-and-coming Republican politicians that are thinking, you know what, I can do that. Yeah. I, can, I can tweet whatever I want. Well, and we see that. We see the Matt Gates of the world who mm -hmm. are trying to be as divisive and angry and hyperbolic as possible. Uh, that's not necessarily new, but mm -hmm. if if it proves that that's the way to win. You know, negative ads weren't negative ads have always been in American politics. But 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 certainly at some point we realized on TV, whether it was the Daisy ad for J, uh, for LBJ or or some other time, we realized negative ads really work. And once people realize those tend to work better, that's why now all we see is negative ads. We rarely see positive ads from any politician. We that's see true. attack ads on the other side. If people start to believe that nasty tweeting, insulting, be, that that works. If they believe that works, they're going to continue to do it. And I am loath to defend um, conservatives a lot. I'm loath to defend Republicans sometimes. But I have to, I want to be, at least myself, the type of person that I want the other side to be too. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know that that's going to change anything. I'm not going to pretend yeah. I'm stupid enough to think me trying to be more fair is going to change anything. But I, I, I don't want to be a part of the problem. So yeah. Let me ask you one more question, because you, uh, in the very beginning, you alluded to uh, the willingness of some of your hosts, perhaps outside of the, or some of your guests uh, outside of the first episode, to spread a little bit of BS. Um, I, you've had a number of episodes right now. It's still a small sample size, so let's bear that in mind. Have you noticed a pattern in which side is a little bit more free with the slinging of the BS? Um... They're both pretty good at it, you know, and I and I have to own my again, own my bias mm -hmm. and recognize that it's possible that sometimes BS gets slung from the left that I'm not as quick to jump on. I try my best to jump on it. Maybe I believe it more. Um, but last week, not this most recent episode, but the week before last, we had a guest who is a. I guess a stand-up comic, um, former TV industry person who has been telling stories and talking about his experiences with Donald Trump and Donald Trump being a drug addict and coming to the Apprentice set uh, after going to the bathroom and doing lines of drugs. And I was on Apprentice, and I know that's not true. I was there. He didn't mm. show up late. I mean, so I'll call that kind of crap out too. I mean, yeah, I do hear from guests who are on the on the right that that I hear a lot of the talking points that um, that really kind of baffle me, you know, the the Russian talking points, the Ukrainian talking points, the Joe Biden is in bed with China talking points that that frustrate me. Um, I sometimes feel like what we hit get I get more from the right is what about ism. Mm. And what we get more from the left are desire to look and to critique every single hair on Donald Trump's head. And again, Mm -hmm. There's plenty that's wrong, and I'm all for that, <laughs> but plenty that's wrong. But I don't feel like you need to look that hard, and so sometimes it does frustrate frustrate me when Democrats get really upset about a particular meme or something that he said that was just stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think Republicans are bigger on whataboutism, and to me, when I hear whataboutism, I hear, okay, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> and, a fancy looking, way to admit yeah, yeah. <laughs> and looking for recognizing, OK, you got me there. But what about Obama? Yeah. Well, Obama's not president anymore. So move on. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the podcast is How the Heck Are We Going to Get Along? It is a Politicon podcast. Uh, Clay, thank you so much for joining us. Had a great experience Absolutely on the podcast jump. and having yeah. you on the show has been great, too. Thank you. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.